In his book, The Intelligent Investor, first published in 1949, the famous investor Benjamin Graham wrote this. The investor's chief problem, and even his worst enemy, is likely to be himself. In this series of videos, we're going to be looking at some of the behavioural biases that hold investors back. And we'll be starting with one of the most prevalent biases of all, optimism bias, and specifically overconfidence. Optimism and overconfidence are not exactly the same phenomenon, but they are closely related. So it has been found that people are vulnerable to three types of optimistic biases. One has to do with the illusion of control. So people tend to think that they have some control over events that are independent of them. Yes, we know that historically equities have produced returns of around 5% above inflation over the long term. But the fact is, we don't actually have any control over the financial markets whatsoever. What you don't know is what individual stocks are going to go up tomorrow or which funds are going to outperform over the next week or month or year. Those are really driven by news. The second problem with optimism is what behavioural experts call superiority bias. The superiority bias, um, which is also called the better than average effect, is the idea that we tend to think of ourselves as better than average in a number of domains. So we may think that we are more attractive, smarter, more generous as well. There's just a, a feeling that we as humans have of exceptionalism, that we, that we all kind of think that uh, we're a little bit above average in whatever we do. So the idea that hope springs eternal among people in whatever it is that we're doing, I think um, you know, also applies to investing. The last of the three factors that Lisa Bortolotti referred to is unrealistic optimism or underestimating the likelihood of a negative outcome. Because what we might think is that um, our past performance or our knowledge of a certain field make us more able to predict what kind of event will happen. And I think in the financial world it's possible that we may think that we will be able to know whether a certain company will be successful or whether uh, certain rates will go up or down and, and this capacity that we think we have to predict how things will go will make us make decisions that are more bold and do not take into account maybe other factors that we should factor in. You have an investor, whether it's a private investor or a professional, and it makes some good investing decisions. Now, as a result of that, that could lead them to believe that they've got a high level of skill. The fact is, they may have a high level of skill or they may have been lucky. The consequence is, though, that as a result of that, they may start taking additional risk. Of course, generally speaking, optimism and confidence to a point are positive traits to have. For a start, they're good for our health and mental well-being. But in certain areas of life, they can be counterproductive and investing is definitely one of them.